Hey yo, River. Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. I hope you're having an absolute magical day, and thank you so much for taking the time to support the channel. Holy Toledo's Commander Legends Boulder Gate. Oh, it's here, and we're opening packs at the end of every video, so make sure to watch to the end. Thumbs up, comment, and subscribe as well. It really does help support the channel into the future. Today, we have a brand new standard deck. Holy Toledo's. We're taking literally the most hated archetype, in my opinion, Angels, and uh, you know, we're dirty dogging it, right? We're gonna add Kiki Jiki to it, one of the most broken cards I've seen in standard for a while since really Hallbreak or Horror, but it's not a seven drop, it's a three drop, which is fantastic. Um, so you know, Angels that we're making copies of now, oh yeah, we're gonna break down the deck list, talk about the strategies, the synergies that are incorporated within the build. Showcase all of this within our gameplay footage, you know, do a good job of demonstrating that to the best of my ability, LOL. And then we'll wrap up with our final thoughts deck review and of course that pack opening. So let's go and take a look at the build. Alrighty. So Fallen Angels, I mean, it, what else are you going to name this deck? We have Aliza the Forgotten Archangel for 5 as a 4-5 with Flying and Life Link and whenever another non-token angel you control dies, return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. If a creature an opponent's controls would die, exile it instead, right? So this is going to help ensure that we can replay all of, all of our creatures if they're removed late game and, uh, you know, that our opponent cannot do that with theirs, which is just fantastic. Uh, first and foremost, out of the gate. But secondly, you know, it's a 4-5 with Flying and Life Link which is, uh, yeah, that's a booty that you're going to have to deal with. And not easily, I may add as well. It's multicolored, so it's going to dodge things like, uh, you know, Vanishing Verse, which we do run ourselves as a little bit of removal. Before we get to that, you know, it's Righteous Valkyrie, one of the core cards of the deck, a 2-4 with flying, and whenever another angel or cleric enters the battlefield under our control, we're going to gain life equal to that creature's toughness. And as long as we have seven or more life than our starting total, 27 in this case, our creatures will gain plus two, plus two, which is uh, an amount. And it is also a Nodgen Legendary, uh, which means you can stack it organically. And, you know, I did mention this earlier, but Kiki Jiki, um, you know, paying one, tapping it to create a token that's a copy of another target non-legendary creature that you control, except it has haste, sacrificing it at the beginning of the next end step, right? So this is very, very goofy because as you're having these two fours enter play, um, you're easily going to get to 27 life, and then they're all just going to bash in with flying. It's it's not okay. It's very, very bad. And it gets worse. Uh, wait, that's not all. Gadia, Font of Hope for two as a 2-2 two -two with flying and vigilance. And each other angel you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it for each angel that you already control. That really does help with those tokens that you're, you know, making with Kiki Jig. It's, you're going to have to see it to believe it and play with it as well, for sure. Uh, but then tapping it for one white mana to our pool, spending it to cast angel spells, which is great. So it's got vigilance. You can attack, deal some damage, and then tap it for mana to play more angels, which is fantastic. Very, very good. We have the Youthful Valkyrie here. It's a good card, oddly enough, in the build, uh, mostly because of the Font of Hope. So it's a 1-3 with flying for two. Whenever another angel enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on the Youthful Valkyrie. So, you know, again, it's great because Kiki Jiki is going to be making all of these angels. Um, that's going to be pushing up the Valkyrie. And, uh, of course, you know, it itself is very cheap to play. And if you're stacking a whole bunch of angels through Gadia, you know, this 1-3 easily is becoming, uh, you know, much more formidable than that. Of course, we have the Overseer here for three mana as a 2-1 with flying. And it entered the battlefield gaining one life and drawing you a card, which is fantastic. And again, with the Font of Hope, you know, this isn't just a 2-1. Uh, it's going to get bigger and badder the more angels that you have in play, which is absolutely fantastic. And another fantastic target to copy with Kiki Jiki for the draw or the life gain. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? Legion Angel, 4-3 with flying. When it enters play, grab another from your sideboard, put it into hand. So there's three in the sideboard there as well. The Fajar's Retribution for four, making a 4-4 angel with flying and vigilance. That's already pretty good. And then we can tap any angel that we control to destroy target creature with power less than this creature's power, which is ridiculous. That is so good. And if it wasn't enough, angels you control to gain double strike until the end of turn, which is surely going to win you the game. And we also have angel fire ignition here. Uh, you know, two plus one plus one counters. Vigilance, trample, lifelink, indestructible haste until end of turn with flashback. Yeah, it's very, very good. Uh, we love to see it. Removal, Infernal Graphs, just like get out of here. We're going to lose two life at instant speed for two to destroy a creature. Vanishing Verse also for two at instant speed to exile target monocolored permanent. So a little bit of restriction there. And then one copy of Strangle Sorcery Speed for one dealing three damage to target creature or planeswalker. 
Uh, a little bit of, you know, value-based utility through the cleric class. If we gain life, gain that much plus one. Pay four for two. Whenever we do gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on creature we control. And that's very, very nice through that overseer. And then finally paying five to bring a creature back from our graveyard into the battlefield, gaining life equal to its toughness. And that's, you know, really nice to help us get started with an archangel if they do happen to remove it to the grave. Holy Toledos. That is the deck list, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you do enjoy. We've got the Cave of the Frost Dragon in Ganjo, Hive, Abandoned Mire, and then Den of the Bugbear as well. Not the Crucible. Not really find a place that for that here. Um, and then, you know, just all of our lands for consistencies, right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. All these things really do help the channel. Don't forget to watch the end because we've got a new pack to open. Very, very exciting. So let's check out some gameplay footage. And uh, I do believe, what was our win rate here? Was it a 69% win rate? I almost want to say that it was. <laughs> all right, well, this looks like a mulligan to us. Two red land, uh, two black land now. Just get out of town. That's a really good hand. Like, mulligan to five and freaking slay. Let's see if it pays off or not. Beautiful. That's our third land we need. Let's see if there's a removal or not. There is dot com. Ouch. Okay. Good on them. Do you have another? Maybe still hard to say. Negative. Oh my gosh. Gulp. Thanks for the five life, dog. Righteous Valkyrie is... I, I don't care what anyone says. That's just a fair and playable card. I remember think, when thinking Pridesmaid was all like, oh, Pridesmaid is such a busted card. No. <laughs> no, I'll take that prize mid any day. Quite a bit of damage here, right? So uh, we're taking nine. Or not. Math is hard. Thinking for a uh, white or black source here. It would almost be better to play a creature, be far more life. White or black land off the top would be just ideal. 10 life gained. Um, hmm, this might be really bad. We're taking 3 to 14. They exile our ignition with the sentinel, which is good. I mean, I'm going to take Rage if they have removal, it's whatever. I assume they do. Without doubt, they do. Okay. We still just need that. All right, this is bad. All right, this is actually really bad here. That's game. Three to four. And then we can't block two creatures with one body. I ain't got no bodies. Oakley dokely. Not having to mulligan is a big help. I see our opponent has done their first mulligan. It's not to say that you should never mulligan, right? Because it's a very important part of the game. 
the first thing you do and it's, you know, you want to set yourself up for success, not to failure. Huh? Clerk class out. Valkyrie Retribution, Lisa. Very nice curve to four. Just looking for one more land. Valky takes the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie. I'll stop. That's good. Definitely not bad, bro. This has to be a white source for us. And we're looking for a red source here. Big hit. <laughs> Guaranteed they have removal. And I'd rather it survive. So let's just throw the 4-4 out there. It's like, yeah, remove that. And they will. And they will, most definitely. I like Valky's coat. It looks comfy. This is kind of silly, though, isn't it? Just so it comes out as a, a 4 6, right? We have two angels in play already. Then it can survive, you know, anything dirty, like a meat hook. Looking for a red source here. Might maybe throw some additional reds in the deck. Grasps on Valky. Down to 14, two mana up. Okay, that's really good. Really good, right? We do have double strike, though. So that's like uh, 8, 10, 12 damage here. It's a lot of heat. In fact, it is a lethal amount of heat, baby. With the land. Hive is a go. One goes first. I mean, you know. They're going to need to. Look at our turn two, baby. Oh, no. It gets even worse. Beautiful. Very nice looking hand here. The Duelist is actually a favorite card of mine. Very good for free-to-play peeps. So oh, it's actually spells you cast that target a creature. Uh, will cost uh, cast for two less. Only generic mana, of course. That's why they still have to pay for that. But I mean, I'll just keep it slow. I kind of like those plus one counters. Okay, goodbye, Valkyrie. They took my guy. Let's just slow roll them. I think they missed a land drop, maybe. Well, I don't I They missed a land drop. 
okay it's nice to get that counter right alien still gets to hit us they have plenty of cards in hand as well a jadar oh wow interesting i'm gonna nuke jadar that's a really good card Pulling the land is definitely not a bad thing. Taking a draw. Let's just go for it. <clears throat> Swing for eight. They might want to take the one that's untapped. Oh. All right, you have my attention. Let me take that uh, right of oblivion away. That should be good. Dahlia is pretty cool. It's a lot of land. Hit for 11. It's very close. Spread the threats. I mean, it could be a field wipe. Fourth land and depopulate. They get to, well, no, Thalia messes that up for them too. Never mind. Good game. Oakley Dokley keeping seven. Very good start for us. Even a backup hope if needed. I'll allow it. I'd like to get fabled out almost beforehand, but however the cookie crumbles, I understand. Oh, I might just want to deal with that. It's so annoying. It just gets bigger and gets badder. And I hate it. This is like a crazy hand. Okay, okay. Kiki goes. And then it's Hope Valkyrie. Valkyrie. Hope. If they don't remove the first one. All right, we'll just we'll play the let and keep the second. Three cards in hand. Okay. We're pulling some of that removal out, and I'm glad they took the token. You have no idea. It is good manners to toss that. Hopefully there's not more removal, but, you know, we tried to do our best to try, to try and draw another land through Kiki. I think that's probably the most responsible play for us there. Luminarchs are not removable, but they could still have something like a, a Blood Chief's Thirst. Down to 17. All right. 
swing, take our damage, and then just just toss the Archangel out. Um, I like it because it's multicolor, and we know they have Vanishing Verse, so it's something that they can't take. I think. Still pouring out spells to the battlefield. Priest, cleric class. Let's take a chunk for seven. Here's a Valkyrie. Should have done the hope, and then we could have had mana for the verse or grasp. It's okay though, the blocker's nice too. We will most likely just kiki on their end step, the righteous Valkyrie. Good game. Yeah, that's kind of how that would end as well. <laughs> Going first. Uh, well, it's not as cool of a start as I've grown accustomed to, but uh, you know, we'll accept it. Uh, this is going to be a white source. We have the red source on two, black source on three. Let's go. Maybe second. It depends, right? But there's a good chance that's how it'll play out. Could be if we draw another black source, a white source instead. Uh, untapped. Even though we have nothing. Be responsible. Play Kiki Jiki turn three. Right? Irresponsible play. What could go wrong? Counterspell? No, there's a direct removal. And that's actually pretty smart. Oh, absolutely not. Sorry. Not today, Kiki. Hashtag you wish, brah. Um, just sneak that Valk out. Worried about that one mana if it was a, a gotcha spell if we tapped out. Right? Non-creature counter spellpierce.com backslash why'd I do that? A little slow, but it gets us to five. This gets removed immediately. Let's get after a retribution. Do they nuke the Valkyrie? No, they just counter the retribution. Interesting. We are tapped out though, so it's you know we're not much of a threat here. It could be a shadow's verdict or something. No. Ouch. What a bully. Okay. All right. Show no mercy. I was kind of feeling bad about playing this Angel's deck. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore, Darg. Can we get it, I wonder? Or do we just make this whole situation far worse? I think we've made it worse. We want, if they have to, like, spend the mana, I want it done on my turn, not theirs. Well, not really all that we hoped and dreamed for. I'm not going to double block because Lee's is, like, right, right next in line. So, you know, A, I would gain, you know, all, more life than they're dealing damage here. And then B, we can just block it next turn. Wow. And that's lethal. Ooh, righteous Valkyrie. A fair and playable card. Sorry, Goldspan. Not today. 
All right, going first, uh, a little slow, but it's there, right? I mean, there's worse things than having to wait until turn three to play a Righteous Valkyrie. And we have removal on two, and, you know, there's another three drop if we don't get the land on four, and then there's four drop, so that's the hand breakdown. It's an important thing to do uh, when you are starting the game. I don't know if... I, I just apparently for the last three years of my career I've assumed everyone does that because I've never, I don't think, given it as advice necessarily. But now you know. You'll never lose again, Jack. What you got, Willis? Well, that's not bad. Well, that's not barred. Alright. Let's uh, kind of wait it out. Hopefully we can get that red land off the top. What it is what it is. We can block the Twitch with the Valk, so it's whatever. It can stay. We are. I'm not going to offer them the Valkyrie just yet. Holy Toledo's, we have breaking news coming out. Early access event to Bowler Gate. Say what? I have to read the article. We have to make a video about it. But right now, we have to win the match first. Oh my gosh. My mind has blown up. Did you guys know that we're also opening Bowler Gate packs at the end of every video? It's so exciting. It's so exciting. We need four land. Blood on the snow. This is my only red source. I almost played it as a, a white source, which I still think was good. But last second, I was like, wait a minute. Now you're excited about this early access idea. We need to hold on to our horsies still. I'm going to play this hive now. I think that's a fantastic idea. And then I'm going to swing in. There's good incentive for them here to kill the overseer. Also, the goblin. I mean, the goblin's not great either, right? So. See how this unfolds. It's the uh, blood on the snow that I'm leery of, right? I don't want to drop into that. Easy to deal with, but it also, you know, forces them to act. Did they even have a blood on the snow? A lot of single target removal. Hmm. That certainly is interesting as well. This is pretty cheeky here. Angel Fire Kiki? Hashtag let's go vigilance. Cheeky, Kiki, Jiki. Huh. That's interesting. We'll end turn here.
Um, oh, the haste left. I see. We didn't keep it. The summoning sickness came back. I just caught that at the end. I see. Not so. Not so clever now, are we? I mean, this just feels like a safe turn. They tapped their hive, which is interesting. Definitely grabbing back. Oh, single target, not even blood. That is interesting. You have a loop with blood on the snow and the elementalist. It's quite interesting. We had another land we could uh, just rinse and repeat, but then they have to remove all. Cleric class can sneak in, and then we still have our grasp as needed. Right? We can kill their hive if they try to take our angel fire. Gotcha. For one, I mean, they're going to take something. So here's the Valkyrie. They're down to nine. So it's like, how much wiggle room do you really have? Let's keep this elementalist maybe out of their grave if we can with the, the hive at all. Again, we need to dodge this downfall though. Well, there it is. Okay, now they bring the blood on the snow back, I'd assume. It's quite good. Let's just snag it. Whatever. You're out of here. Tybalt is very, very good. If three mana up still. Only we had six mana. And I still have removal. That's very good for them. Right, with another blood. They might have gotten us here. I can't find that second white source. Almost regretting the red, but... Oof. I want to just play into another blood. All right, that's probably going to be game. All right, I don't know how we get around Tibble and Onyx now. Taking that second white source, finally.
And they still hold up plenty of single target, right? I think we're still pretty hooped here. More life is respectable, but it's just a blood on the snow. Tybalt can minus. How do you recover from that? Just don't think that's an option. I'm going to go ahead and show myself out. Very, very good game. Opponent goes first. That's all right. We have very nice removal for a black source as we progress. Turn to Valkyrie. I'm just going to take Gallic Readers. It's a fantastic card. Just get rid of it. Cool Swamp Art. I'm going to give them a draw. Because I want my Kiki out as soon as possible. Actually, I'm just going to take six damage. That sounds far better to me. Fourth land. Nissa. Hey girl. What up? Land into creature. Just till end of turn. But what it does is untap it. And then they can equip. Hey, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty cool, dog. Pretty good. So we can just kill this now, though, which is really a lot of fun for me. Because that's not something that hits Planeswalkers, right? We also get to make the treasure here, which is great. I think I take this damage. Big old bash on the choppers. Oof, down to six. Yikes, right? Man, you crazy. Man, you crazy. Valkyries to go. Second Valkyrie this turn is a go. Gonna deal with us? What are they looking at their grave for? Let's smash for two. Giving some uh, defensive stature here with the Valkyries now. We have removal taking us to four. BEA Beautiful, hello, good game. 69% win rate. Let's leave it there. Woo. That's what we like to get all our decks to, right? Holy Toledos, what a fantastic deck. You know, many people are just going to scoop up to this. Like, it's annoying to play against. I get it. The Font of Hope busted. Righteous Valkyrie was already busted, which is just like, holy. 
And then adding my favorite card, you know, Angel Fire, Ignition. Very, very good, especially within the life gain archetype that puffs up the Righteous Valkyrie and then consequently your whole field. And then, you know, just Kiki Jiki on top of that as well. It's just like, man, I almost feel bad playing this deck, but it is what it is. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Oh my God, down below in the comments. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment, comment, comment. <laughs> but let's open this pack, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Not waste any time. Last time I read every single card. As we go through the packs and uh, I've seen the cards before, we're going to get through it a little bit faster. Oh, that is good. Okay. This is good. This is good. What a way to start the pack. Now that's just fantastic. Can this be my new avatar? Right? Look at that guy. Wow. I love it. Okay, we'll go through them as quickly as we can. We've got a mountain. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, the exquisite blade. Alt art. Love to see it. Enters the battlefield. Gain two life. Scry tune. Whenever you cast a second spell each turn, exile up to one target creature you control, then return that battle to the battlefield under its owner's control. That's actually really good. That's a nice flicker creature. Ooh, lightning bolt. Alt art. Three damage to any target for one at instant speed. Settle down. I better be careful with that one. The Crossing Patrol, also for one with Myriad. Whenever this creature attacks, it's going to make a token of itself, attacking each other creature, and then you'll, uh, not creature, but opponent, if you have multiple opponents, and then exiling them. The Citadel Gate, nice little land here, entering the battlefield tapped. As it enters the battlefield, choose a color other than white, and then you can add that color or white, which is pretty cool. The Black Dragon Gate, same thing, but for black, right? We have uh, seven drop six six with Adventure, nice to see Frog Demon. Uh, Hezro, uh, Wolf, whenever one or more creatures you control becomes blocked, each blocking creature gets minus one, minus one until the end of turn, not bad. Instant speed for one, Demonic Screech, each creature that blocked this turn gets minus one, minus one, uh, until the end of turn. Wolf, that's actually pretty cool at instant speed, that's, that's nice. Um, anyhow, moving on here. The Burnished Heart for three, two, two, pay three, sacrifice it. Search for two basic lands into the battlefield tapped and shuffle. Wow, okay, that's that's a card. That's a nice little ramp card. Destroy target non-legendary creature cast down. We just like the new art here. Drill works mole for one, one, one. Pay two, tap it, put counters on it, and one other target commander that you control. Commander creature, in fact, as well. Uh, another copy of the Exquisite Blade. Regular art. Master Chef for three. Legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have this creature enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it, and other creatures you control enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on them. A alt art master chef literally right behind it. This is a that's a holographic uh, master chef as well. Beautiful. Then we have Will's reversal for three. That looks so sick with the green screen. Oh my lord! Instant speed. Choose target spell or ability with one or more targets. Roll a d20. And then add the greatest power among creatures you control. Wow, 1 to 14. You may choose new targets for that spell or ability. That's pretty cool. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself, right? And then 15 plus, you may choose new targets for that spell or ability. Then copy it. And you may choose new uh, targets for the copy as well. That's really good. We love it. We also have an alt art uh, scale slinger. Alt art holographic scale slinger. That's uh that's pretty groovy here. One four. You may look at the top card of your library at any time, and you may cast dragon spells from the top of your library. Uh oh, as a dragon bard. That's pretty cool. And then the soldier. B E A beautiful. That scale slinger is pretty nice. And then our, I guess our best card there was uh, Will's reversal. Love to see that, and uh, and we're gonna add that to the collection. Be a beautiful, anywho. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. All these things really do help the channel into the future and ensure that we can do fun things like this to wrap up. Holy Toledo's, did you know that Boulder Gate has early access coming July 5th and July 6th? You can hang out with your favorite streamers, and we'll play some of these new cards that have been modified for Arena. More on that, and it's in video. Until then, have a magical day. Take care.